Hi guys. Oh boy. This is attempt three. Oh boy. I have a bit of a tendency of running full speed ahead of things like a toddler without stability. I want to get to the goal as quick as I can, so I bowl forward and I knock a lot of things down in the process and make a lot of mistakes. I'm definitely a bit of a bull in the china shop and I have been since I was a child. My brain moves at a million miles a second, so I have a million things that I want to say or do at any given time. It also means I'm rarely existing in one emotion and I haven't had a proper restful night's sleep in about oh, like 20 years. This year has been particularly challenging in that regard. I feel a little bit lost in the blizzard, like I can't focus on this thing or that. It's been one thing after another this year, and then another behind the door that we forgot to look in. It feels very heavy and painful to be human right now. And I'm not entirely sure where I'm supposed to be looking. There's a lot demanding our attention right now, from a global health pandemic, to political destruction, to systemic conversations around anti-racism and destructing the systems of white supremacy, to overwhelming misinformation and online propaganda, to people just completely ignoring environmental destruction and emotional devastation that's happening right now. When I have these conversations with people, it's like I don't know where to start with the conversation. I don't know if I want to talk about wealth inequality and sociopathic billionaires, or if I want to talk about women's issues, or if I want to talk about LGBT issues, or if I want to talk about racism. It's just a lot. There's like 300 other issues that are visible to our generation, and it's it feels like it's almost too much conflict. It's too many choices. It's too much information for us to understand all at once and it takes a lot of focus and energy to dissect these things and go into them. It becomes so much that I feel like there are two options which is to run at it full speed like I do most things and to make a ton of mistakes and to talk before I do the research or to hide under a rock and to ignore everything and to sink into my depression and to sink into my mental illness and forget about everything. It's really clear in a lot of conversations that I have that I'm unfocused and uneducated in this. There's like this buzzing of energy that wants to do something and wants to advocate and wants to be better, but there's no direction and there's no idea of how to harness that energy. It's why my first two attempts about this video, about my privilege and recovery privilege, were such a dumpster fire. It was rambled, not specific, not accurate information that was spat out with a lot of emotion behind it and no real clear intention. I approached the video the first time with kind of the energy of an excited new puppy of like, oh, look at me, look at this stuff that I just learned 10 minutes ago and feel educated to share about. Do you see me trying? Do you see white women trying in the, the racism space? It was bullshit, to be honest. It was very much, look at the white woman, give her credit for trying type energy. And that's not what my intentions are. And that's also not the approach that I should be taking. I'm not an anti-racism educator, nor do I have the experience or the education to put out some 30-minute video talking on experiences that I have nothing to do with. There are tons of other Black and Indigenous creators who are talking about the exact same things that I was talking about, and you should go listen to them, and I should not be taking that space up. Like, sit down, girl. I have no right to speak on that experience. I need to focus on my own experience. So here's the new goal for this video. Stick to my own experiences with my privilege and recovery and not just race because let's be honest, that's not the only privilege that I hold. I need to take a minute and a half, reflect on my experiences and reflect on the systems that made it more accessible for me. The purpose of this video is not to negate the struggles of addiction, nor is it to belittle the hard work and experience it is to be in active recovery. If anything, what I hope it does is maybe just gets you to think about what privileges 
you hold that were so in the background that they were just kind of taken for granted and forgotten about. By understanding that my experiences were different from other people's, it'll help me better empathize and understand that their behaviors and their actions are coming from a different place of experiences, a different set of values. Understanding my privileges also helps take me out of victim mode, which I tend to revert back to quite a bit, and reminds me that not everything is against me, um, especially when my negative thinking starts to get me into that habit. I've been really struggling lately, especially with quarantine, and I know everybody is, but taking this time to take a step back and reflect that my experience I'm actually very privileged in helps take me out of that victim mentality. If I can be honest with myself about my experiences, then I can take more responsibility for my future and I can take more actions in the future to ensure that people who have less privilege and less access than me are lifted up by me and promoted. All right, so let's get into it. I have three pretty big privileges that are visible in the society that I live in, and those are just the obvious ones that I can think up off the top of my head. I'm white, I am thin, and I am able-bodied. I can guarantee that there are more that I'm not thinking about yet, but let's discuss these three and what that means for recovery. So being white in recovery spaces means that I'm seeing pretty much only people who look like me. 12-step programs are dependent on a group belief and faith in the program, which is not entirely a welcoming space for differences of opinion and different values or beliefs. In my year of going to the program in many different cities, I met maybe three black people in all of those different meetings. 12-step programs were built by white people for white people, and it's not an inclusive space. Literature in the AA program, for example, was only made specifically for black people uh, in 2002, which was 60 years after the program started. I've also been lucky enough to be taken seriously by most of my healthcare practitioners when I'm talking about my own mental distress and the issues that I've been facing. And while access to treatment has not always been available, they've never discounted what I've told them. I was able to go to my doctor and be diagnosed with fibromyalgia at 24 and that's one of those diagnoses that's harder to get and it took about two and a half to three years of symptoms but it still is a diagnosis that's helping me able better understand my body and move forward with some of the symptoms that I'm facing. I've been offered a lot of different mental health programs and I've been through different treatment programs as well through inpatient and outpatient. Um, but I'm also just given the opportunity to have multiple fresh starts when I move all the time. I was also given the privilege of choice when my family gave me an intervention around my addiction. They gave me the options um, an opportunity to move into one of two houses um, in order to recover. This gave me access to employment, to community, and to a lot of freedom in my recovery journey and in order to grow, which is not something that's often seen with people who struggle with addiction. Another privilege that I hold is being able-bodied. It took me too long to realize the extent of this privilege and part of that is because of the frustration and anger that I felt towards my body in relation to this chronic illness. I've always been peripherally aware of the privileges that I held being able-bodied but to be completely honest with you, I took a lot of it for granted. This is in part due to the fact that I'm starting to relearn my physical capabilities and limitations with the chronic illness and there was a lot of grief and there was a lot of anger and frustration that came along with that. I used to be really active and participate in a lot of different things when I was younger and with the chronic pain and chronic fatigue that I've been experiencing for the last two years or so I've really had to scale back my activities and that's been something that's been really hard for me to mentally process and deal with which has caused a lot of stress for me um, and has caused a lot of disdain towards my body. It's just another version of sinking into victim mode and, think, and sinking into, well, why is this harder for me? The reality though is that I need to sit with and really process the fact that I'm fully able-bodied and that is a huge privilege that I definitely take for granted. I'm able to supplement my recovery with movement. I'm able to go for a walk or a run if I'm feeling stressed out or if I wanna get some fresh air. 
I'm able to fully live on my own and support myself and take care of all of the duties that I need to independently. I don't have to consider accessibility when it comes to recovery resources. And these are huge privileges that it took me a long time to admit and, and come to terms with, and that's unacceptable. This is something that I'm actively striving to learn more about and to do better with and to understand better. And I'm definitely still not perfect. One of my biggest weaknesses is how much I complain about things, about my struggle, about my circumstances. I often take a lot of these privileges for granted because they exist in the background and they do exactly what they're intended to do. They don't feel like privileges to me because that is what I've grown up knowing and it just is my reality. They are privileges though and this is my opportunity in recovery to start addressing that. Especially if I'm going to be making videos on YouTube for people who are entering recovery themselves. I have to start working towards better awareness towards lifting up other voices, towards lifting up other people, and towards understanding that my experience in recovery is not everybody else's experience in recovery. Recovery is messy and complicated, and if I struggle with it this much with the privileges that I have, I can't even imagine what the latter looks like for somebody else. This video might seem like a bit of a mess, but to be honest with you, it's much more honest than the first two tries of this video, and I think it is more focused in recovery. I don't have all the answers, I just want to have a conversation. But I need to slow down. So for now, we'll just sit with this. I'm thankful for recovery, I'm thankful for everyone who helped get me here, and I'm thankful for the ability to make these videos. Next week, I'm gonna upload a video about what it's like being sober in quarantine and what recovery has been like for me in this whole pandemic era we're living in and I will talk to you on Wednesday. Bye guys.